So I figured I would film a video today because I've got lots of things to do, need to clean out the animals, I'm also putting together a, a tank, uh, one for the shrimp, and also I'm doing a lot of filming today, um, so lots of things I'm just going to check up on, and as you can see the guinea pigs are very messy, um, yes, guinea pigs just, if you didn't know, get very messy, and Dougal, because he likes to run down the stairs, he keeps moving all the bedding down so everything looks even messier, but yes, I'm going to clean them out now. My chinchilla also needs to be cleaned out as well. Come here, Ruby. Once again, um, chinchilla is very, very messy animals. Any kind of rodents, I think, produce quite a lot of waste because they tend to just go to the loo constantly. I love when their little ears are flat down. You can tell they've been asleep. Ruby. So instead of watching me just clean out the guinea pigs, I thought it'd be far more interesting to spy on them. So I'm going to go clean them out, but they have this whole entire hallway which actually goes around the corner as well. And I'm just going to see what they get up to. Also, I've noticed lately that Dougal has now reached that stage where he wants to hump Teddy. So obviously there's going to be a bit of a fight for dominance, but um, yeah, we shall see what they get up to when I'm not watching. <laughs> the guinea pigs but I had to come back midway and stop the footage because I can't film for long on this camera but look what I found they have pulled a pom-pom off their new tunnel dear oh dear okay so now they're just going to walk home that's not a guinea pig that's a rabbit not a real one come on in, guys okay so here we go with the guinea pig train come on guys so yeah I can't I don't tend to be able to film long time lapses of my camera once I filmed like a 20 minute one in short clips and it took six to seven hours for the files to convert so that I could actually use them on my video editor. Um, and then the footage wasn't even that great afterwards. It was the um, Dino Pet video. And for some reason it was so sticky and it was such a big file I couldn't even keep it on my computer because it wouldn't work. But what are they doing here? Come on. Go on. That way. Go home. Go home guys. I love how in my salmonella video I was like, don't take your animals in your kitchen. My guinea pigs kind of walk through the kitchen, but you know, it's on the floor and the floor gets cleaned. Go on, off you go. Um, also, talking about time lapses, I know in my uh, science lab video, a lot of people wanted like a longer time lapse, but that's why. It's just, if I want to film with a decent camera, it's such massive files that I just can't do it. <laughs> Um, excuse me, Ted, come on. But if anyone has any other suggestions on what I could do for the science lab, if you have anything you want to see, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do. Go on then, guys. They're not going to walk today. Usually they just walk along right up to their hutch. Look how good my shoes are. They're Toy Story ones. My sister got me them for Christmas. And they have Andy on the bottom. Anyway, I'm out here now because I'm picking some grass finally. We have enough sort of grass that we can pick. There's like hardly any fruit winter, so the guinea pigs are gonna quite enjoy this. There's a cat. There you go, guys. Aww. Some people think this, well actually only one person has commented saying that my hutch is too small. Um, but I guess you can't really tell from just on a video. I think it's like 18 square foot altogether, which I think is fine for two guinea pigs. I mean, I assume so. But also this isn't their hutch all the time. They have a summer hutch as well, which is a chicken coop with a massive run. So they have plenty of room and they come out like every day. So it's quite a while later. Ted is asleep on the hay. I don't know how well you can see that. Dougal's behind him. Uh, I cleaned out Ruby, my chinchilla, but now I'm actually going to check on the ants and the privet hawk moth because I haven't seen them in a while. I think the cat's been around here because it's got like cat hair. I wonder how many of you guys can remember his name. It's Edgar. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of water in here because this is very dry. 
but I assume he's still alive. Hopefully. <laughs> So him and the uh, ants have been sort of in the same area in the conservatory where it's been very cold but not frosty that it could damage them but cold enough that they will hibernate successfully. So I'm just going to spray this down. You may remember Harry the Hawk Moth. It's a different kind of Hawk Moth but Hawk Moths tend to need to uh, hibernate and then they will emerge in spring. I don't know if he's going to move. sure he's okay <laughs> it is still very cold so let's hope so now for the ants once again they've been in the same place as the moth so that's where the cat goes and so this is covered in cat hair this is pretty much to keep their test tube dark all the time but oh you can't see <laughs> let's have a closer look okay so they all look fairly well hopefully we can yeah the queen's moving that's good I think I'll do an update on these guys at the end of the month. I didn't bother last month because they were just hibernating so they weren't doing anything. But um, they seem to have become more active and we'll just check whether that hole that they blocked off, they've emptied it or not. So that is the tiny hole they blocked up. It seems like they are starting to empty it so I might put some food and water in the outworld in case they do venture out there. But um, do any of you guys know what time they start to actually come out fully of hibernation? Like when they start becoming active again? Would you say it's probably March time? I'm not sure. But for now we'll leave it here and I'm sure you'll see more when I do an update. And then the other thing I'm doing today is putting together this aquarium. I've only actually got two more plants to put in and then I should be done. Obviously it will look very sparse at first because it needs to really like the plants really need to grow but yeah it's been quite fun so far it has taken longer than I expected and you know you'll watch loads of tutorials on doing aquariums and they just somehow do it perfectly without a hitch but yes um I don't know if that video will be up before this but let's just say it's taken me quite a while to do this aquarium a lot of mistakes made but it's okay it's a learning curve isn't it so these are the last two I need to add and then I should be done I've had Diego out, just putting him back here. Let's see, I don't know how well you're going to see him. <laughs> it looks so dark on my camera, but it really isn't. Let's see. There he is. Uh, yeah, he was out for ages, but I can't really film. Literally, all I had was my iPad, and it had like 10 seconds worth of video it could film. But Diego's been a bit weird lately. He hasn't really been eaten, and he looks like he's lost a bit of weight. So... We'll have to see uh, when we do the weighing video if he has really lost that much, but yeah. It might just be because we've had really cold weather lately and um, geckos can pick up on that and like the air pressure drop, so who knows. But he is pretty cool um, out and about. I actually get them out all the time, but it is just really hard to record it. And if we just look in across the gecko tank, look where Lyra is. <laughs> She always reminds me of like a fire belly, like newt, I think it is, with her belly like that. But yeah, she's out and about. Isla isn't so much. Um, Isla's actually, she doesn't venture out on her glass so much. I think that's partly due to the humidity. I have a feeling it's quite dry in here because of the heater. Like this, this ground, ground, substrate, like I'll add water to, and although it's not totally dry now, in the lower layers and how it looks, some of the parts of the top layer, it is quite dry and like her food, literally just put in yesterday, it dries out, like it doesn't look it but it's pretty, you know, stuck in there so things dry out really quick and Lyra and her belly, her belly's still massive, you can feel like it's still just gooey, like it's not hard shell but for some reason it's not going down and she doesn't have the best appetite so it is very frustrating. And there's Isla, you may be able to see her. She actually goes to sleep with her tail curled up on her back, like how cute is that? But yeah, her belly's still massive, I really don't know what to do. Um, she doesn't look too fabulous in general so um, just have to keep trying to get her to eat and hope eventually she reabsorbs everything because I do genuinely think she is reabsorbing them like in the process I don't think she lays them because if she had she would have looked a lot slimmer very quickly but yes uh, this has been my vlog today I'm just gonna go around and spray down the 
across the gecko tanks, but I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching. Before I go though, it looks like Ziggy and Minnie want to say hello, so I'm going to have to get Ziggy out, I think. Uh, all my geckos have started to do the thing again, you know, when they start scratching at the glass. Um, I always check that, you know, they've got water, the temperature's correct, they've got no bugs that are, like, annoying them. Um, and usually it just gets down to the fact they just probably want to get out and do a bit more exercise, so that's what we do. <laughs> Let's just let her out. Yeah, she'll come out. But anyway, as I was saying, I hope you have enjoyed today's video and goodbye.